Good health to all from Rexall. It's the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show, presented transcribed by the makers of Rexall drug products and 10,000 independent Rexall family druggists. Good evening. This is your Rexall family druggist, here to welcome you for all 10,000 of us. The 10,000 independent druggists who have chosen to make the word Rexall part of our own store names. We've done that because we believe in the 2,000 or more drug products made by the Rexall Drug Company. And we've put the orange and blue Rexall sign on our windows to let you know we recommend and sell them. Bismarex is a good example of the quality of these products. This famous Rexall antacid often brings relief from acid indigestion within five minutes, neutralizing excess acidity and leaving a soothing protective covering on irritated stomach membranes. Quality like that of Bismarex is what we family druggists are talking about when we tell you you can depend on any drug product that bears the name Rexall. Good health to all from Rexall. And now your Rexall family druggist brings you the Phil Harris Alice Fay Show, written by Ray Singer and Dick Chevrolet, with Elliot Lewis, Walter Tetley, Robert North, Janine Roos, Anne Whitfield, Walter Sharp and his music, yours truly, Bill Foreman, and starring Alice Fay and Phil Harris. <laughs> Next week, Phil and Alice are sailing for Europe where Phil and Jack Benny are playing a three weeks engagement at the Palladium Theater in London. Phil has decided to take Frankie with him. And as we look in, Phil, Alice, and Frankie are discussing the trip. Curly, tell me once more, after we play London, where do we go? Paris. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be on the loose, just you and I. And me and my monkey wrench. <laughs> What monkey wrench? Well, in case you boys get too loose, I'll be there to tighten you up. <laughs> oh, that's right. You're going too. Hey, Frankie, you know uh, something? We're really going to have a fine time. Look, we'll spend every night at the Louvre. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to live it up. <laughs> I heard a lot about the Louvre. Oh, I'm glad to hear you fellas talk that way. Because the Louvre is one of the most famous museums in the world. A museum? <laughs> How do you like that? The way people rave about it, I thought it was at least a burlesque house. <laughs> <laughs> you want to know something, Remley? We got to investigate these places before we go to see them. Because if we ain't careful, we're liable to find ourselves educated. You know, on second thought... Maybe we'd better not go to Paris. Well, if you don't want to go, dear, you you don't have to. Well, yeah, Curly and me will go, and we'll bring you back some presents. We'll get you some of that famous French perfume. Yeah. Hey, yeah, we'll get you a couple of bottles of that Cuvassier. <laughs> Phil, that's a brandy. It is... <laughs> Picture myself dabbing Cavossier behind my ears. <laughs> oh, honey, don't be sick. Hey, Rumley, we gotta try it that way sometime. <laughs> hey, Curly, have you made all the arrangements for the trip? Yeah, and I got something to tell you, Rumley. Yeah. Oh, man. We're traveling first class all the way. Now, we go east on the Santa Fe Chief, then we take. Good the... morning, everybody. Oh, hiya, Willie. As I was saying, we take the Chief east, then we take the Queen Mary to England, and in London, we stay at the Savoy Hotel. The Savoy? Oh, Philip, you're making a big mistake. <laughs> if you want to have a good time in London, stay at the Grosvenor House. Yeah? <laughs> Why, kid? Every afternoon they have tea dancing. <laughs> Well, bless you for the tip, you little crumpet you. <laughs> Quite all right, Philip. <laughs> By the way, Alice, I met your doctor on the street, and he's expecting you at his office at 11 for the shots. What shots? Oh, uh, well, Phil, you see, I'm having the children vaccinated before we go, and mm -hmm. I want you and Frankie to go with me because, well, they might act up, and I want you to control them. 
Yeah, but Alice Curley promised to get down and shoot some pool with me. Well, I can... That's out, Remley. I can't do it now. Oh, that's the trouble with girls. They're such sissies about getting a little shot in the arm. Mm. Okay, Frankie, come upstairs with me while I put a tie on. We'll okay. be down in a few minutes, Alice. Alice, I don't understand. The doctor said that you, Francis, and Philip have to be vaccinated against smallpox, not the children. Oh, I know. I just told Phil it's for the children so I can get him down there. He's such a baby about those things. Well, I suppose he refuses to go through with it when you get him down there. Oh, I've got that all worked out with the children and the doctor. We're going to trick him into it. Oh, sis, you're so smart. No wonder you have money. <laughs> <laughs> You're a rare combination You have everything Brains, beauty, and talent Yeah I'm loaded, ain't I? <laughs> Would you care to hear me sing, Willie? Oh, yes, sis, by all means do This boy knows which side his bread is buttered on <laughs> What banks fail in Yonkers Long as you've got a kiss that conquers Why should I care? Life is one long to flee So long as I care for you And you care for me I love you and you love me and that's how it will always be And nothing else can ever mean a thing Who cares if the public chatters Love's the only thing that matters Who cares, Who cares if, if the sky cares to fall in the sea Who cares what banks fail in Yonkers Long as you have a kiss that conquers, why should I care? Life is one long jubilee, as long as I care for you, and you care. Hello, Dr. Brannigan. Hello, Doctor. Hello, Mrs. Harris. I'm glad to see you're in time for your appointment. Hello, children. Well, Mrs. Harris, if you and your husband are ready, uh -oh, I'm... Mr. Harris isn't here yet. Oh? Where is the great big bundle of nerves? <laughs> well, he's parking the car. And now, don't forget, Doctor, he doesn't know he's to have the vaccination. We're going to trick him into it like we planned, huh? Mrs. Harris, why do I always have to play games with him? <laughs> When I took out his tonsils, I had to dress up like a cowboy, pretend he was an Indian, and tie him to the operating table. <laughs> it was that time I took out his appendix. That was fun. For that one, I was Dick Tracy, looking for a new character named No Stomach. <laughs> I know. But, Doctor... Just go along with me once more. All right, but frankly, Mrs. Harris, I'm getting a little fed up playing patty cake with old Yellow Belly. <laughs> <laughs> he faints every time I go near him. Well, it, it's not his fault, Doctor. He, he's a little squeamish. Now, look, girls, when the doctor makes believe he's going to give you a vaccination, you start carrying on something awful, and then Daddy will get... Oh, here he is now. Hey, Frankie and me had a tough time parking a car. We couldn't find a place... Oh, Good morning, Doctor. Well, if it isn't no guts. <laughs> Where have you been hiding? I ain't been hiding. I ain't got nothing to hide from. Yeah, it's the kids who are getting the vaccination. Oh, we don't want a vaccination! Wait, oh, wait, 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 all for crying out loud, kids. Stop acting like children. Now, stop it. Stop it. There's nothing to get in the vaccination. No, of course not. 
All the doctor does is take a big, long needle, jab it in your arm. <laughs> well, there goes canvas back Harris. <laughs> hey, Curly, get up. Ooh. What round do you get me in for? <laughs> Remley, do you have to be so descriptive? Now, what was I saying? You were telling the girls there's nothing to getting a vaccination. Oh, yeah. Now, look, kids. There's absolutely nothing to be afraid of. It doesn't hurt a bit. Prove it, Daddy. You have it done first and show us it doesn't hurt. Okay, I'll go... <laughs> what are you trying to do, get me killed or something? <laughs> agree with Phyllis. One of us should volunteer and show the children that it's not painful. Curly, Alice is right. We ought to be ashamed of ourselves. Yeah, I guess so. After all, grown-ups should set examples for kids. Doctor, get your needle ready. <laughs> and Alice? Yes, Phil? Hold still while I roll up your sleeve. <laughs> Now, look, Harris, I don't have any time to coddle you. You're here to get a vaccination. Well, I know that, but I... What? <laughs> oh, that's right, Phil. Oh. When you leave the United States, you have to get a vaccination. Otherwise, they won't let you back in again. That's the law. Well, in that case, there's only one thing to do. I'll have the law changed. Oh, Phil. <laughs> All right, Remley, take a letter to Senator McCarthy. Right. <laughs> Dear Senator, it has been called to my attention that vaccinations are communistic. I suggest you send them back to where they came from And I demand oh, that shut you... shut up! Now hold still and let me give you a shot in the arm Or I'll give you a shot in the head <laughs> Now, Mrs. Harris Why don't you and Mr. Remley have it done first? Maybe if Snookum sees how simple it is He'll let me do it to him All right, doctor Get the needle Go ahead. Very well. Now, this will take no time at all. I'll just take this tiny little needle and make a few pins. Please! <laughs> Not in front of me. <laughs> Give them their shots in the other room. I want to be alone to think this over. <laughs> all right, all right. Come along, you people. Great big blob of jello. <laughs> <laughs> In all my 30 years of practice, I've never seen anything like this. Such a disgusting display of cowardice. I don't know how anybody could be like that. Well, let's go into my other office. Remley, I'll give you your shot first. You said... <laughs> Me? I'd love to, doctor, but I can't. You see, I left my arm in my other suit. <laughs> No, I mean, I left my money in my other suit. You won't need any money. This shot is on the house. <laughs> oh, well, as long as the house is buying, I'll have one. <laughs> now, look, Doc. Alice, see what the boys in the back room will have. <laughs> oh, why are men all such babies? I never... Hey, Doctor, I'm here again. Oh, hello, Miss Faye. Oh, hello, Julius. What are you doing here? Oh, I come here once a week. What for? I don't know. Doctor said he just likes to study me. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing here? Well, I brought Mr. Harris down for a vaccination. He has to be inoculated against smallpox. What for? No self-respect and joy would touch him with a fork. <laughs> Where is he? Well, he's in the next room trying to work up enough courage to take the shot. He's scared silly. Ah, the big marshmallow. <laughs> Which room's he in, Miss Faye? I'll go in and uh, <clears throat> comfort him. Well, <laughs> well he, he's in there and... Please, Julius, be gentle with him. Don't frighten him any more than he is. Please. Please, Miss Faye. I'd have to be a rat to do a thing like that. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Not to find the big cheese and start gnawing on it. I don't want to let them do it. 
I don't want to let him do it. Oh, cry, Schmo. You gotta go, you gotta go, you gotta go. <laughs> Julia. Oh, it's you, Mr. Harris. What are you doing here? I came down to get a vaccination. Oh, no. That's what finished my poor uncle. <laughs> I hate to see you go this way What are you talking about? Nobody ever dies from a vaccination They don't? I better dig my uncle up and tell him that <laughs> You mean the, the, the vaccination killed him? No, no, it wasn't the vaccination that did it It was the fall What fall? He couldn't stand the pain, so he jumped out of the window. <laughs> Julius, Dr. Brannigan told me it wouldn't hurt. Don't pay no attention to Butcher Boy Brannigan. <laughs> He's the biggest liar in the business. Butcher Boy? Yeah, he studies surgery in the Safeway meat market. <laughs> <laughs> Now, Julius, you stop that. You're just trying to scare me, and I... Well, Harris, I'm ready to give you a shot now. Drop that cleaver, butcher boy. <laughs> Come on, Harris. Oh, but, Doctor, uh, uh, Doctor, you have no time for me. You, uh, Doctor, you've got a call. They want you in surgery. Surgery? Yeah, they've got an emergency rump roast at Safeway. <laughs> I knew it. He's delirious. Here, Harris, drink this. It'll calm your nerves. Oh, drink, huh? Yeah. Thanks. I can use a drink. Oh. Will, this, will this put him to sleep, Doctor? Yes, I just gave him a very strong sedative It'll put him to sleep in a few minutes And then I can give him a shot <laughs> Now just sit down and rest, Harris You'll feel better I'll be back in a few minutes Okay <laughs> Hey, Frankie Yeah? I feel better already Good As soon as you get your shot, we'll go over to the pool room I don't feel like shooting a pool Huh? I feel kind of light in the head, you know? I feel like, uh, like, uh, <laughs> like singing. Just because he feels good, he's got to make me feel lousy. <laughs> There's them that does and them that don't, and them that says they will but won't. So if Satan tempts you, hold on tight, coach, you can't do wrong doing right. There's them that shall and them them champ and them that wish they could but can't But it's them that does that sees the light Cause you can't do wrong doing right Look at that gal Delilah She had them all in a spin She clipped the mighty Samson But she got caught when the house fell in So you see there's got to be Just one road for you and me Let old Satan know he's lost the fight Cause you can't do wrong doing right You gotta do right Ah, keep a preaching Yes, you gotta do right Ah, make me Know it. If you want to see the light, I'll tell it, brother. Cause you can't do wrong when you're doing right. There's them that's good, them that's mean, and them that's somewhere in between. But to me, it looks from what I've seen that you can't do wrong doing right. There's them that's meek and them that's bold. Now, don't ask me, but I've been told it's the meek that plays them hearts of gold. But you can't do wrong doing right. Now, look at old Big Goliath bragging about his side, picking on little David. But he got his right between the eyes and so you see there's got to be just one road for you and me let old satan know he lost the fight cause you can't do wrong doing right you mustn't do wrong that's right with me no you mustn't do wrong oh, that's philosophy if you want to get along oh i believe it now cause you'll never get along if you're doing wrong why they threw daniel to the line the king had it done he's the law but it wasn't long till little Danny had all of them cats drinking milk out of straw. And so you see, there's got to be just one road for you and me. Let old Satan do. He lost the fight. Cause you can't do wrong doing right. Cause you can't do wrong doing right. Cause you can't do wrong when you're doing what is right. Keep on doing right. Hey, Frankie, how'd you... Frank... Hmm. Even Frankie left me. <sighs> I'm all alone. Mm. Bet they're all in that other room just plotting against me. <laughs> <sighs> this is gonna hurt awful. Nobody seems to care. Must be a doctor who wouldn't hurt me. 
Frankie could help. He always knows a guy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, I wouldn't want to go to any Dr. Revely knows. Gee, I feel so sleepy. I'd never go to any Dr. Frankie knows. <sighs> Where am I? Where am I? Where am I? Hello, Wonga. <laughs> Who are you? I'm Frankie Remley's personal physician. <laughs> but this is a, a, a pool room. This is where I have my office. <laughs> I'm Dr. Painless Pearson, physician, surgeon, and snooker expert. <laughs> All operations done with one foot on the floor. <laughs> You're Frankie's doctor? Yeah. I've been treating him since he was a child. Hiya, Doc. Francis, are you still alive? <laughs> I could have sworn I polished you off three years ago. Now, wait a minute, Doc. Are you in the habit of losing your patients? My dear sir, I'll have you know in 30 years of practice, I have never lost a patient. I know exactly where every one of them is buried. <laughs> See? He takes a personal interest. Hey, now, what are you here for, sir? Do you give shots? Ooh, do I? <laughs> What kind of a shot do you want? A vaccination. Oh, I just love to do that, Liz. Oh, you like it, huh? Yes, it's the most dangerous operation in medical history. Well, why is it so dangerous? I use a dirty needle. <laughs> Here, I'll get you ready for your vaccination. Oh, nurse, prepare the patient for surgery. Okay, Doc, which table do you want me to rock him up on? <laughs> In the one near the window. I want people to see the kind of work I do. Hey, Frankie, why are they operating on me? I just came for a vaccination. Uh, well, they're having a sale today. Vaccination? <laughs> vaccination and appendix removed for the price of one plus a penny more. <laughs> Good evening. All right, Harris, lie down on the table here. A nurse, call the head surgeon, Dr. Safeway. He's in surgery. He's in surgery, but I'll call him. Dr. Safeway, Dr. Safeway, you're wanted on table three. You're wanted on table three. I can't come now. I can't come now. Why not? Why not? I'm slicing liverwurst. <laughs> You make mine on rye. Not too much mustard. Cut it out. <laughs> Gee whiz, all I want is a vaccination. Vaccination? Is a cut to the right place, Mac. Nice, hold my sandwich. And get my instrument. Very well. Here's your cue stick all chalked up. Good. <laughs> now stand back, everybody. I'm ready for the operation. Hey, just a minute, doctor. Call your shot. <laughs> my liver in the side pocket. My what? Your liver in the side pocket. Why don't you put a little English on it and kiss it off my appendix? <laughs> Better yet, let's play rotation. Start with his liver and run him off till we get to the rye bread. Now cut it out. <laughs> All I want is a vaccination. Oh, okay. Nice blindfold me and hand me my harpoon. Harpoon? Yeah, I give you a sporting chance. <laughs> I get back 30 feet and throw it blindfold. Here goes. Oh! What's wrong, nice? Oh, Doctor, from now on, you gotta open your eyes. That's the 20th time you vaccinated me this week. <laughs> All right, now, wait a minute. If you're gonna vaccinate me, do it the right way. Use a needle. All right, we'll do it your way. 
Nice hand me the vaccine. Vaccine. Needle. Needle in. Record. Record on. Da 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 da. Boom. <laughs> Put another needle in. Down there underneath it. Only what I hear from him is Cut it out. Screaming, screaming. You're hurting me. Crying. You think he's dying. Now wait a minute. Stop it. I don't want to hear no more of that. Stop it. You hear me? Stop it. Stop it. What happened? Where am I? Well, you're in Dr. Brannigan's office. Huh? Uh-huh. He gave you a sedative. You've been dreaming. Oh, thank goodness. Oh, honey, I dreamt I went to some guy Frankie recommended, and it was awful. <laughs> <coughs> Doc, you can give me my vaccination now. I'm ready for it. After what I went through, I can take anything. I gave it to you while you were asleep. <laughs> you did? I didn't even feel it. Hey, that shows you I can take it. You people thought I was a coward. Why, well, I'm as brave as anybody. I'm braver than anybody, and I guarantee you that Alice, I... Alice, wouldn't you like to know how I did it? Yeah. How'd you do it, Doc? <laughs> well, I took a big, long needle, and I jabbed it in. <laughs> oh, Doctor, you made him faint again. I know. Isn't it nice and peaceful with a big baboon unconscious? <laughs> Alice and Phil will be back in just a moment. But first, here's your Rexall family druggist. Everyone knows that vitamins are necessary to life, but maybe you don't know that plenamins... Rexall's famous multivitamin capsules give you more than your daily minimum requirements of every vitamin for which such requirements have been established, plus valuable liver concentrate and iron. And that's an ironclad guarantee from Rexall scientists. But how are they able to guarantee that? Because they take plenty of time and scientific care in measuring them. For instance, the vitamin B1 and B2 in plenamins is measured by seeing how brightly they glow. Glow? What on earth do you mean? Just what I said, ma'am. First, the vitamin is treated with a chemical that makes it fluorescent under ultraviolet light. In other words, it glows. A photoelectric cell receives this glow and transmits it in terms of electricity to a special meter. And the amount of electricity is the exact measurement of the vitamin. What's the product called again? Plenamins. P-L-E-N-A-M-I-N-S. Remember it the next time you buy a vitamin product. And remember also, you can depend on any drug product that bears the name Rexall. Good health to all from Rexall. Folks, this is Phil Harris. Before we sign off for the season... Alice and I would like to thank all of you listeners for being so kind to us. And we also want to thank the 10,000 independent Rexall druggists for giving us the opportunity to come into your homes. And we're very grateful to everyone behind the scenes who make this show possible. And don't forget to listen to Dick Powell, who is starting Wednesday, June the 14th, for Rexall. And remember, we'll be back in October, same time, same station. Until we're with you again in October... Have a wonderful summer. Happy vacation, everybody. And don't forget, tomorrow night, Jack, Benny, and I in our big stage show will see all of you folks in Scranton. Good night. <laughs> This program was produced and transcribed by Paul Phillips. Once more, this is your Rexall family druggist speaking for the makers of Rexall drug products and 10,000 independent Rexall druggists. Thanking Phil Harris, Alice Fay, and every member of the cast for a season of grand entertainment. And now, friends, be with the Rexall family on Wednesday, June 14th, when we bring you our new show, a real thriller called Richard Diamond, Private Detective, starring Dick Powell. Remember the date, Wednesday, June 14th. The time, 10.30 p.m. Eastern Daylight Savings Time on these same NBC stations. The Saint moved next Sunday to NBC.